I really have to say I pretty much did it my way. And I was criticized for that early on in my career. I was young and aggressive, had a coaching background, realized that I couldn't coach every player, that my assistants had to help me. So I adapted that same principle to the racehorse industry. And I, got, I started interviewing really sharp young guys that were ambitious and eager to make their mark and then coaching them through our operation, getting them to drink the Kool-Aid, so to speak. I thought, you know, our legacy may be as much for turning out top assistants as it would be for all the champions that we had. I mean, people are starting to relate to that. As you get older, they turn and say, well, that guy went through that program, he worked for Wayne, and so forth. And it's really uh, been very gratifying to see that. It wasn't as difficult as you think. Everybody had to have a great work ethic. I worked them right into the dirt. I always tell them, we're only gonna work half days. What you do with the other half is up to you. <laughs> 12 hours. We're gonna put in 12 hours, and whatever you do with the other 12 is up to you. So we, we worked them hard, and we expected a lot from them, and they handled it. Got a little bit of a corporate uh, image. People would say, well, I don't know if he's a horse trainer, but he sure is a good organizer. He's got a corporate mentality and an organizer, you know, and a great manager. I, we got a lot of that. And then these champions started coming along one right after the other, and I think we overcome that over years. The idea of running at a major racetrack against the best trainers in the world uh, and that competitiveness in me is what drove me in the passion. I, um, I enjoyed every big race a little bit more than any of the, th the third races on Wednesday, for example. More than anything. For every, for every stakes winner, every champion of our 26 Eclipse champions, horse of the year, none of that uh, stands up to the fact that I can watch Todd Pletcher and Karen and Dallas Stewart and Mike Maker and George Weaver and those guys uh, go over there. And I look at a stakes race at Saratoga and I thought, oh my gosh, there's five of my guys in here and there's only nine horses. You know, when I say my guys, they'll all have one in there. And uh, for Todd to break all of my records, and which I think he eventually will, um, there's some of them might stand for a little while, but uh, it's very gratifying. I love it. I love it. I think any of the major stakes, the Traverse or the Hopeful or, uh, you know, the Belmont or any of those always stand out. They're the ones where the pictures are still on the wall. I think all my Belmonts, uh, the sell, the, the race itself, the Belmont stake is a great memory. I think next year, I, I think I got a great shot to win it next year. I love my two-year-olds better than my three-year-olds right now. I really like my two-year-olds. and. Uh, no, I, I wake up every, uh, around uh, February, and I realize that I'm gonna take another run at it. I, I really feel I'll win another one, maybe a couple. I'm, I'm going uh, pretty good. My stable's smaller, but my quality's pretty good right now.